Welcome to my kitchen. My name is Ray Don Chong, and I am going to teach you how to make homemade pizza, which happens to be one of my favorite fast food dishes, and quite simple, actually. First, I want to show you, if you want to have a look at this, um, some of the preparations. We have fresh basil. I just baked this um, peppers mm. with a bit of garlic and salt. It is delicious. We have um, some chopped garlic some uncooked peppers, not hot of course, red and yellow. We have olives and we have some pre-made pizza sauce, which I will confess is not homemade, but I mean it's pizza sauce and it's Newman's own and it goes to a good cause, so I didn't mind cheating. And you can get any kind of sauce that you want. Then of course we have five different cheeses. We have feta, mozzarella, we have some picorini, excuse me, picorino romano, we have some goat cheese, we have some fat-free mozzarella, which I think for real pizza aficionados, that's a sin. <laughs> but because I try to balance the fattening with the not fattening, I'm going to include it. Now, mind you, you have to be careful with fat-free um, cheeses because if you cook them too long, they turn out like paper. But we're not going to do that today. In fact, we're going to probably ignore the mozzarella. We're just going to go straight with the fat cheese. Let me finish this, mm. and we'll continue. Now. The first thing you need, aside from courage, is flour. I use a whole wheat flour for fiber. A lot of people think that that's sinful as well, that you should use white flour, but I think it's okay to use a whole wheat flour, and I think it's really good for you. Also, they say that you should maybe add some cornmeal. I don't know about adding the cornmeal to my dough. I think it's just good for when you're preparing the pizza at the end, so I'm going to save it for the end. All right, first thing you need, measuring cup. How are we doing? Great. First thing you need is a measuring cup, and I already have one in here. Okay, so I'm going to put half a cup to start, but actually I think all in we need three, three and a half cups of flour. And because it's hard to get in here, I would say this was about three cups of flour, let's hope. All right, so this is what it looks like. Now, of course, you should probably use measuring spoons, but I don't. I go by feel, and this is a pinch of salt. So for each cup, you should have mm, a pinch. So I'm going to do three and a half pinches with this. Then the most important ingredient is olive oil. Now, we did three and a half cups, so I'm going to put a tablespoon and a half, if not two, per cup because... I don't think you can ever have enough olive oil in your dough. And it's an important ingredient, and I think it also is good for the heart. And we just, we just sort of love it. All right, I think that was four, five, and six. Okay. So I like to take off all my jewelry, make sure your hands are clean. I have nail polish on, but I don't think it's going to come off in the dough, so I think we're safe. Um, I want you to look at the, the, what it looks like now. And I like to start to mix it before I add the, the uh, wet moisture, which, by the way, is going to be water with sugar and yeast. But first, I like to touch and play with the flour, with the oil and the salt, and make sure that it's well mixed. And this is part of the reason why I think this is one of the greatest dinners. Um, homemade pizza, especially after a very stressful day at work, homemade pizza is homemade, and it's easy, and it's quick. And I also think that it does something, when you touch the flour like this, I think it's a natural de-stressor. I start to feel more connected when I start to make homemade pizza. I'm excited about the uh, impending dinner. I, I feel like I'm really making something from my heart when I make pizza. And I think it's, it's this, it's the act of just touching the flour like this. Um, it doesn't take long to make, of course, but it's really, I think, tactile. and. Just sort of gorgeous to touch the flour. So as you can see, it's sort of getting a little bit grainier, um, and it feels it feels what it is. It feels like it's almost ready for moisture. Now the moisture part is pretty complicated, but still easy to do. You take a cup of water and two tablespoons of sugar, and this is my gorgeous cabbage sugar holder, which I love. So and I have a whole organic, you know, super expensive Hawaiian sugar. 
You take this and you put it in the microwave. It takes one minute. So I'm going to go do that right now. You don't have to follow me. Just wait one second. I'll be right back. And you put it on for a minute. Okay, the magic about making a show is that you have it already proved. Voila! But one minute in the microwave. And what you should do before you put in the yeast, because yeast is alive and it's fussy. So I put in a tablespoon, sometimes a tablespoon and a half of yeast into the one cup of water with sugar. But before you do that, after you've microwaved the water with the sugar, you stir it up and you have to wait using a meat thermometer. Um, this is my fantastic thermometer, which I covet. I've had it for many, many, many years. You put this in the center of the water before you add the yeast and you make sure that the yeast is, I mean the water is no hotter than 110, 120. If it is hotter, just let it set aside and start to prepare some of the fixings that you're going to put on the pizza because yeast is very, very, very delicate and you don't want to kill it. Okay, this is proofed yeast. So you gently, carefully put in, say, half the contents. And I like to put some of the um, foamy bits in because that's where all the yeast is hiding. Then you begin to mix your flour. And it's warm, so talk about fun to do. I really love this part of making pizza. And you start to um, manipulate the dough until it forms into a perfect ball. And I'm not sure, but um, I think the Iranians invented pizza. I don't think it's an Italian invention. What do you think, Bill? I'm not sure. I don't think it is Italian. I think it was made, uh, this is a dish that was first originally created in the Middle East. Desert food. Maybe the Bedouins. Let's say the Bedouins invented pizza and then they sold the recipe to the Italians. Along the spice trail, let's just make up new history. <laughs> I think it's a good idea. All right, here we go. Now, again, the magic of camera work is that after your dough, and by the way, if it's tacky, like this dough has become pretty, pretty sticky, stick your hand into the flour and just gently sprinkle some more on because you don't want it to be too sticky that it doesn't form a uh, uniform ball. And you want to give it a good working with your kneading it, with your palm of your hand. You want to give it a really good, a really good couple minutes of kneading. Um, I have a friend, she, she will knead her dough for, her, for a long time and then she sets it out and she lets it um, almost turn to sourdough. She's quite funny about that. I'm not quite that, um, that way. I like, my, I like to make my dough, let it rise and then just immediately serve it. Okay, so this is what it looks like when it's prepared to sit for a minute and it needs to rise. It needs to, to get fussy. Hold on a second. So I put it on top of the stove and I place, I place a rag or something, a towel, a dish towel on top of it to help it rise up. I'm just going to wash some of this um, flour off my hands. And you know the thing also about pizza that I like is that you can put anything you want. I mean ideally the best pizza is probably cheese pizza because everybody likes it and after it's made you can add things to it, particularly chili peppers. And I think it goes the best with wine. Simple cheese pizza, chili peppers and a great glass of wine. Some people like to add more. We have, you know, like I said, these side, these side um, add-ons. So other people like to add even more extraordinary things like smoked trout or sardines, um, prosciutto, different kinds of um, sausages. Those are delicious, but um, sausages particularly are very greasy. And so since most of us are trying to watch our weight, I don't usually make sausage pizzas. But anyway, some people like it, pastrami, whatever. All right, here we go. This is what it looks like when it's puffed up and um, is ready to be played with. So I am going to take this already pre-made dough and roll it out. Now, some people use their hands to make the pizza. I don't. I like to use a rolling pin. And the reason is, I don't know why I like to use a ro rolling pin. I just do. I think it makes a tidier, flatter, thinner crust than my fingers. And I also don't like to touch the dough too much because I think that um, 
I think that it messes with it, and I like to, uh, to, I guess, baby it. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of this cornmeal and put it on the board just to give it a little bit of grit. And we take our nice, perfect, already made risen dough, and I like to put it around on the board like this just to get it um, so that it doesn't stick to the rolling pin. And then you roll it out. And as you can see, it's pretty substantial. And it, you know, it looks delicious and I'm excited to eat it. All right, and you just keep rolling it out. And in this case today, I'm thinking, what do I want to put on this fantastic canvas? And this is the other, you know, satisfying thing about making homemade pizza. It's like a canvas. And I mean, literally, this has taken probably 15 minutes to organize. And this is the genius of homemade pizza, because you're not ordering out. You're not copping to the easy, you know, take in, take out situation. You're actually putting some, you know, hard work and your soul into it. And that's the joy of, of making homemade pizza, is that it's quick, it's easy, and it's got you it's got your intention on it, and I think that's the gift of good, good eating and good hosting, is putting a bit of yourself into food. I mean, it's almost uh, a religion. All right, so the first thing you do is we add olive oil, and I take a spoon, olive oil, and I carefully drizzle to cover the entire surface. And then I take the back of the spoon and I try to take it all the way out to the edges of the, of the dough. And this is scrumptious. Here we go. And then the next thing you add is the tomato sauce. And again, this is a really good uh, garlic, basil. It's just fantastic. And we love Paul Newman. I mean, I, of course, I could do this at home but, and make this homemade. But for this particular day, we're going to just donate some money to charity because all of the proceeds to his products go to the Hole in the Wall Gang, which is a marvelous camp for kids with high medical needs. And you got to love that. Okay, so you just put all of the tomato, not too much because it can weigh down the, um, the pizza. So we have plans to put some more goods on it and we don't want to put too, too, too much of the paste. But you just want to put enough to cover it and to hold the garlic and the fresh basil, maybe a little bit of um, chopped shallots. And it's funny because, of course, here in Canada, we say shallots, which I don't know why that is. It's you say potato and I say potato. <laughs> you say shallot and I say shallot. <laughs> right, OK. Here we go. Um, and then once you've done the sauce, you decide what else you want to do. So I'm going to put some garlic. And by the way, this pizza that I'm making is going out to this fabulous crew of men that I have working on my house. And they um, actually put dibs on this first pizza. And I said, absolutely, they could have it. That's another thing. You get popular. You get more popular making homemade stuff. And I'll tell you. Pizza is a good way to a man's soul, to anyone's soul, man or woman. Okay, so you spread out some chopped garlic. Uh, I'm going to go, I could go heavier with the garlic, but I'm going to go a little bit lighter for this particular test. And then I'm going to put a little bit of, um, just a slight sprinkling of the shallots because it is strong. And with the garlic, I mean, I don't think we need to overkill here. And then this is fresh chopped basil that I picked up. And I'd like to say I grew it, but I didn't. OK. So we sprinkle some fresh basil around. I guess in a way, this is, I guess this is called puttanesca, although we don't have capers. I forgot to get capers. Whew, bad me. All right, here we go. And capers apparently are really good for the heart as well. They lower the cholesterol. And actually, if you think about it, the um, tomatoes are heart our heart good food, good food for the heart. Olive oil is good, good food for the cholesterol and heart. I mean, pizza, if not basically Italian food, is just spectacular for the health. So uh, I think that's another vote for it. OK, we're going to put some olives. Not too many. These are a little bit sad, these olives. I don't know what I was thinking. 
So let's see, here we go. All righty. And then, you know, for the camera, and because we're doing this test, I just baked these, um, which are sauteed in garlic and olive oil. These are peppers. And I'm going to cut them up because I think we shouldn't put big strips. I don't think I'd be able to get the um, pizza off the board. And so these are the baked already peppers, which are quite scrumptious. In fact, I ate one earlier, and I just love them. And they've made my house smell fantastic right now, so we're very grateful to the um, delicious peppers. And then finally, let's do the cheese. Now, I'm not going to do goat cheese on this one, because we could make, and I'm thinking we will, make a more of a dieter's pizza, which is to stay away from the heavy, gooey cheese and to just pop on some really delicious goat cheese, which is light, low fat, and still very scrumptious. The thing is, though, is that when it melts, it melts right where you lay it, and it's not the prettiest pizza, and I don't recommend using goat cheese for children <laughs> because they won't eat it. All right, here we go. So we'll put some of this Asiago. Um, I'm not going to get too much cheese, though, because I don't think you need to eat quite so much fat. And you can still have good, good eatings. And there's a few chunks of mozzarella. We had a pizza party here, didn't we, Bill, a couple weeks ago. Was that a couple weeks ago? Yeah. Yeah. And um, it was really fun, actually. We, we had this dish and another dish and a half, and everybody brought their own um, pizza toppings. And that's another thing. This is an absolute center for uh, hosting a party where everybody is a part of making the meal. The only thing is, is that you really do have to remind everyone to wash their hands <laughs> because people immediately want to come in and start touching stuff and not washing their hands, and that's gross. OK, so I've just put chunks of mozzarella on top of this with Asiago. And I did use a little bit of the um, fat-free mozza. Excuse me, not mozzarella. It was Asiago. And real mozzarella, not fat-free. I found some chunks of it from our party. And let's see what else. Oh, I'm going to put some Pecorino, Romano Pecorino on it, because that's really scrumptious. And I just, um, you have to get high quality, I think, Pecorino, because sometimes it doesn't smell that good, or it's just not, it's cheap. So you want to make sure you've got a good one. Um, the higher-end markets tend to have fantastic cheeses. Um, all right, I think this is done. Okay, so here it is. This is the um, oops, this is the pizza that we've just c concocted, and I'm going to stick it in the oven. It'll take about uh, mm, 11 to 14 minutes, but you should keep an eye on it. I just grab my spatula. All right. You need a hot mitt. Don't touch the pizza stone without this or it will be another show. <laughs> okay, and then you slide it in. What I tend to do is I arc the, um, cut the, the workspace or the, the board, I arc it down so that I don't have to necessarily, it, gravity helps pull this uh, pizza pie off the board and onto the stone. Can you see that? Oh, you can't see it. Well, it looks fantastic and you hear it sizzling because my oven is at 400, has been at 400 for at least an hour and a half. And um, my stone has been heating up for as long. And that's the other thing you need for homemade pizza that you cannot live without. And don't try to do it in a big skillet because it's hard to get the pizza pie into the skillet. You can probably get away with you know, cast iron. But a pizza stone is, what, 20 bucks or less. And um, you'll live with it forever. And <laughs> It's what makes a great pizza. And that's how you make homemade pizza. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be doing this. OK, so it'll take another 11 minutes. Let me put my timer on. Uh, one, two. Now, the other thing you might want to think about is what are you going to serve with the pizza? In this case, um, we have Chianti and Avella Pocella. Is it called? Yes, it's another kind of Italian wine. And I did that sort of in honor of this particular dish. But I just think a nice, good, hearty red, one that you love. I mean, even a Pinot, a Bordeaux. I mean, anything that's substantial, because it's pizza. 
and, I, and even beer. Beer works as well. Bill, what did we have? Do we have? We had wine. We had both beer and wine. Yeah, we like it. I think that it, you know, pizza you can almost get away with anything. The other thing I think it's important to have with pizza because that's a lot of um, a lot of dough, a lot of carbs, and a lot of cheese. I think it's essential to have a salad. So I have orchestrated a very interesting, simple salad. It is called. What is it called? <laughs> arugula. <laughs> Sorry. Is this arugula? Wait. <laughs> it is. It's peppers and arugula. And I have to say it's store-bought. I bought it in a box because I decided that this was going to be the fast food, easy, you know, easy, easy lunch, easy dinner. So this is, and I've always wondered, do you think that people, when you walk on the sidewalk, when you look at this, I mean, this is basically what's on the ground. It's basically weeds, but it's fantastic because it's bitter. I, I think it's important to balance a sweet, uh, meal, which pizza is sweet. You've got the sweet sauce, you've got the sweet cheeses, you've got the sweet peppers. It really is a sweet dish. I think it's great to balance it with a bit of a bitter salad. Not necessarily bitter as in can't eat it, but with a slight little bitter thing going. Hold on just one second. I'm going to find out exactly what kind of lettuce this is because I'm having a complete brain fart and I'm not remembering. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, it is baby arugula. Okay. Baby arugula, which looks like anything you, that grows on the sidewalk, and I actually think it is a sidewalk plant. So this is a baby arugula salad, and all I would do is I would dress it with olive oil and a little bit of apple cider vinegar, which is my favorite because it has this thing called the mother in it, and the mother is a fermented apple. It's basically the fiber of apple cider vinegar, and Bragg's makes a really good one. And I like it because it's also got a little bit of sweet in it, but not as sweet as balsamic, which a lot of people like balsamic. I find it has a lot of sugar in it. So for those of us who are trying to keep our sugar levels down, it's good to use uh, apple cider vinegar. And I'm not going to dress the salad because I don't think we're going to actually get to it. So this is what I would recommend with the pizza. And then what else? How are we doing? Great. Great. Um, so... I'm just trying to think what other, what other wrap-up we would do. I think that's pretty much it, and then we're just going to see in a few minutes. Maybe I'll make one more. I'm going to do one more pizza. I'm going to do the dieter's pizza because this is the low-cal pizza that most children wouldn't, I wouldn't serve this to children, anyone under 12, but I would serve this to girlfriends. So I'll call this the martini pizza because you would have martinis and the dieter's pizza. Why is that? We like our little Cosmos and our martinis. Here we go. So again, I've got my dough, and I've got the cornmeal. You can hear it. I'm going to take out my roller. It's really... Mm. My friend Chris says that um, if it's possible, with a cooking show, talk about the spiritual elements of food, making food. And without using any jargon, I was sort of, I was a little bit perplexed. I thought, oh, how can you, you know, with a cooking show, you bring up topics or discuss things that would be, you know, transformative or, you know, jargon-free, so you don't want to turn off the average person who could give two cents to all this woo-woo nonsense. But I saw what he meant, because some of my favorite films are spiritual, but they completely revolve around food, like Babette's Feast, about a woman who goes and she, she takes a walkabout and she lives with um, basically a community of spiritual aesthetics who live in a far northern North Sea community. And um, she's a chef from France who finds herself in a you know, low point in her life. And she goes and she lives with these aesthetics. And she creates this feast for them to give thanks because she's healed. And I think that's the beauty of, of cooking food is that it heals you. And I think that's the beauty of sharing food and making it is that it's healing. Okay, so again, we do a little bit of, I'm gonna do half the amount of um, olive oil because again, this is for us who are watching our weight at all times, which is a, some of us anyway. And you spread it around as much as you can without making too, too much of a fuss. I know that Bill's wife, Cheryl, likes to make non-tomato pizzas. We call her pizza, pizzas beige because they always look a little bit brown. and It's kind of delicious. Now, I want to add something fabulous, but I don't know what should we do. We want to do that cheese. I am going to use a little bit of red 
because I just, not as much though, I'm going to use a third of it so that it's not quite dominating the uh, pie. Here we go. Another uh, food movie that I liked was the original, Mostly Martha, which I guess original. That was the, the film that was made in Germany. They remade it here with Catherine Zeta-Jones and uh, Aaron Eckhart, but I don't think it was that good. But um, Mostly Martha is a German film, and it's well done, calibrated, fantastic. And again, it's in the kitchen, and it's around food. And then my favorite food movie of this year is Ratatouille. I just love that film, and that's with the rat, and it's Pixar. Okay, so we have a, like, just like a smear of the tomatoes sauce, not a huge big thing. And I'm going to um, place, you know what, I'm going to place the uh, basil in strategic positions so that we can put the uh, goat cheese on top, or the chev. I guess you can't really rhyme with chef. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> if you can rhyme with chef, you can have this job. Um, what would you rhyme with chef? Nuriyev. Right, or Nuriyev. Mm. Yeah. No. <laughs> that was uh, NJ from Bill. And, and by the way, everybody, this is the beloved Bill. Okay, so I'm going to put the chef right on top of the basil because I think the combo will be just too scrumptious to resist. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Let's see, in another food movie, can you think of one, Bill? <clears throat> My Dinner with Andre. Right, and that was actually more, <laughs> yeah, the food, the food, the food. That, that was actually sitting in a restaurant and talking to your bed. That was existential. That was still good, though, food. That was good. I, I thought of another one, too. Uh, Mostly Martha, Bebet's Feast, and there's another film. Okay. Let's see. Well, Ratatouille was very good. What other films? Are there? All right. This is kind of funny. It looks a little bit like a heart. I've made the dough sort of like a heart. I'm going to put some of these scrumptious red peppers that I made this morning before everybody got here. And I am going to add that around. Um, now, there's another film that's in my head. I'm trying to think. Oh, well, of course, then you've got uh, The Age of Innocence, which is the Scorsese film, with, which wasn't about food, but I don't know if you noticed, the film was sort of like, hmm. But the, uh, the sets, and whenever they were, they were eating, which they were eating in this movie, it was with Edith Wharton, they were eating quite a bit. I mean, the food looked amazing. And I was thinking, that is such an Italian for you. He's got to have lots of you know, scrumptious, sumptuous tables. So I thought that was kind of a food movie without meaning to be. And what other one? What other one do we have? Oh, I can't think of it. OK. So this is our dieter's pizza. And it looks a little bit like a heart. Do we think it's pretty? Yeah, that's okay. Bill's saying yes. Now I'm going to wait, and we only have one oven today, but I know one day I'll have more than one. In fact, in my new house, I get to have two ovens. And what else? I'm bragging. Sorry. Forgive me. I'm excited. All right. Oh, it's almost ready. This is exciting. I'm excited. Did I just hurt my sound? Okay, good. <laughs> okay, what else? What else? What else? All right. Um, also, you can do for those who are really, 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 really into eating clean and eating with fiber. You can make the dough with um, more fiber. You can add stuff. What would be a good thing? I would even add, I would be bold enough to say one day I would try to put sunflower seeds in, um, uh, flax seeds, sunflower seeds. Um, what other seeds you can put? You can come in. <laughs> and um, just to make the fiber just, just to make the dough so that it's much more fiberful. But of course, nobody but probably somebody on a diet and women would eat this. I don't think men would really go for it. And I know for sure children won't. So, um, hi, hon. How's it going? It's going good. All right, so just one more second, and then I'm going to get it. You can walk by. You can walk. You can walk. Are you just coming to lick? Yeah, well, the pizza's almost ready. Are the guys into having some? Oh, good. Okay, so do I, um, when I'm finished with it, I'm just going to show it to the camera. Yeah. Do you guys, do you want to bring it out to them? Sure. 
Or do they want to come in here? Okay. I mean, but no, no, they can come up here. They can come. Up. We're almost done. We're almost done. We have a few more minutes. We have about uh, four more minutes, I think. I was just gonna make some noise downstairs. I didn't want to. Uh... Oh, can you just wait? Can you wait for about um, how many? How many minutes have we done so far, Bill? Thirty-one. Okay, great. So we're all, we're done, pretty much. This is in, and I'm going to put this in. All right. So this is our, this is our uh, dieter's pizza, and then our next one, our biggie that we just finished making. I just got to find something to pull it out with. Is about to come out of the oven. Hold on, I've got to figure out how to. I want to transfer. It. Can you just wait? Oh yeah. Okay. Isn't it look good? He did a good job, Bill. I'm just, whoops, I'm just going to transfer this so that I can pull the big pizza out. Oh, so here we go. All right. And the other one's ready. It's hot back here. I'm sweating. All right, so, and I highly recommend short sleeve shirts when you're making homemade pizza because it's really, really hot back here. All right. Does this ever look gorgeous? Look at this. Mmm, pretty spectacular. All right, let me put the, the goat cheese pizza in. All right. So here it is. It looks fantastic. I'm excited. It feels right, and the nice thing about the stone is that it cooks the underside so that it's crispy, and that's important for perfect pizza. All right, let's see. I'm going to cut it for the guys, okay? All right, so it's important to have this as well. This is a pizza cutter, and I think, do they need chili peppers on it, sweetie? I, I think you better leave that up to them. Okay. Um, you can add... These, which I love, crushed red peppers, and they're hot. So, um, because the cheese, I mean, even though it's fantastic and simple just the way it is, it's also nice to have a little bit of zing, a little bit of heat. And I'm going to cut this for the guys because I know they're going to want it. And they're so sweet because they're actually my workers, my workers, the guys that are working on our house, they heard about this test and they were like, can we eat your pizza, please? And I said, yes, you can have my pizza. I guess that was a bad imitation of men speaking, but. <laughs> okay, let's see. Um, yes, and then I have to put the re reset the timer for the, uh, for the goat cheese, and that would be less time. I'm going to say seven minutes. And I don't know that we're going to need to see the end of that one because that's just going to be just too much and too long. <laughs> but let's see. I think that this is it, and I'm feeling like a success. So here is, whoops, my homemade pizza pie by Ray Don Chong. And it's been a pleasure. I'm so glad you could join me, and thanks for coming by. See ya.